All right, guys, we are back with another gear loadout. This is officially my fall setup. I did a gear loadout, I don't know, maybe three, four months ago. Uh, I'll link that right here if you're interested. But this is a little bit different. I've got some new gear. I've made some changes for the fall. I uh, have some different shelter options that I'm gonna be trying out. And um, I'm gonna be testing out a lot of different gear. So I wanted to kind of show you what the changes are and kind of how I uh, handle a fall backpacking trip. So this is a collaboration between myself and three other YouTubers. We got Jeremiah Stringer Hikes, Steve, Tuba, the solo hiker, and then also JK is hiking. And they are gonna be doing very similar videos. The difference is, is they're in different parts of the country and they have different likes and dislikes for gear. Gear is an extremely personal thing for the backpacker. So my system is gonna be totally different from someone else's. And so take my setup with a grain of salt because the stuff that I'm gonna have is gonna to be totally different than probably what you're gonna have. So don't buy something just because I've got it, but make sure you test stuff out, you try it out, and make sure it's gonna fit your needs because uh, how I backpack and the style of backpacking that I do, it may not fit your backpacking. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna walk through some of the uh, new gear and then uh, I'll get a little bit detailed on some of the other gear, but then I'm also gonna pack it up for you and I'm gonna show you just how I would pack up this whole setup and how it's gonna fit inside a tiny little backpack. So out the gate, I'll just tell you that my go-to backpack is gonna be a Z-Pax Arc Blast. There's really not an issue with it. I mean, there's things I like and then things I don't like about it, but one of the reasons why I'm interested in possibly switching this out is because since I started YouTube, I've been kind of increasing my camera gear and my camera gear is getting heavier and heavier um, and that's just something that happens as you grow and you want, you know, better quality video. So this backpack has a certain, you know, weight threshold that it can handle. And once you get close to that weight threshold, it's pretty uncomfortable to carry. It's kind of weighs on your shoulders a little bit. Um, and then the hip belt, you got to strap down a little bit tighter than normal. So it can get a little bit uncomfortable. It's not unbearable, but for longer hikes and that sort of thing, um, it can get a little bit difficult. So a backpack that was sent to me that I'm gonna be trying out is the Duder, 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 <laughs> Futura Pro 40. Now this is a much heavier backpack. This thing weighs about three and a half pounds, I think. So it's definitely heavier. It's two and a half times the weight of this backpack, but this thing can hold in a lot more weight uh, and it can carry a lot more girth to it as far as the weight of the items. And so I'm gonna be testing this out at least on one hike just to kind of see how this does. But that's a gear change I might possibly actually make. So how I tend to pack my backpacks is I take the stuff that's gonna come out last and I put it in first, right? Makes sense. So the item that's gonna come out last when I'm at camp is gonna be my quilt. This quilt is the UGQ Bandit. It is a 20 degree quilt, fantastic quilt. I like bright orange interior because I like to be able to see things at night, especially in my shelter, whatever my shelter is gonna be. So this is gonna definitely go inside first. So I don't really like stuff sacks at all. And the reason I don't like stuff sacks is because they tend to take your sleeping bag and they'll make it real round. And when it's round, it's not gonna get down into the corners it's going to leave the corners you know open so that's room that could be used in other ways so by pushing this quilt in here all the way to the bottom it's getting in all the creeks and crevices and all that stuff so i can have a lot more room inside my pack now this next step really depends on what my shelter is going to be so if i am hammock camping which a new item that i just purchased myself is the dream hammock darien and i'm really excited to try this out um, if I'm gonna be hammock camping, I'll put this in next because I'm not gonna take my hammock out until the very end. The first thing I'm gonna put up is my tarp. And the tarp that I use is the Hammock Gear Cuban Fiber Tarp with Doors. Um, this is an awesome tarp, super lightweight. This would actually go on the outside of my pack in the mesh pouch because I don't care if this gets wet and if it is wet after a, a night's stay, it'll dry out in the mesh pouch behind the backpack so that's not really that big of a deal so let's just assume I'm gonna tent camp I'm gonna take my big Agnes tiger wall UL two-person tent a ultralight tent with the tent poles this thing weighs 
two and a half pounds, pretty lightweight. I love this tent. It's gotten me through a lot of serious storms. Um, when I was in South Dakota up on a cliff, wicked storms came through. This thing held up great, didn't leak at all. Uh, it was probably 50 mile an hour winds and this thing didn't budge at all. So this is a fantastic tent. So if I'm tent camping, this is gonna be one of the things I'm gonna put in last. This is actually gonna end up at the top of my pack because this is gonna be something I'm gonna end up taking out right when I get to camp. But what is gonna go in next after my quilt is gonna be my Nemo Tensor insulated regular wide pad. It's a 19 ounce pad, but it's 25 inches wide and it's three inches thick. I love it. For my style of backpacking, which I'm just a weekend warrior, I'm hiking maybe 10, 15 miles on average, not a big deal. I'm only going for maybe two, three nights, four nights if it's a you know a bigger trip. It's really not that big of a deal, but this is what's gonna go in next. Next thing that's gonna go in the pack is gonna be my Trekology pillows. I've talked about these for months. I've talked about these in pretty much every video. I love these. And I'm saying these because yes, I bring two pillows with me. Helps me sleep better, so not a big deal. Um, don't make fun of me. If you do, that's, that's fine. But I love my Trekology pillows. All right, now depending on the weather, if it's gonna be a cold day and I'm gonna need a jacket throughout the day, I'll pack my jacket up on top. But normally that doesn't happen. I mean, I'm hiking, even in cooler weather, when it's 40 degrees out in the fall, I'm pretty warm while I'm hiking. So I'll take this, and this is a new gear purchase as well. This is the Arturic Atom LT, I think it's called. Um, this is a synthetic jacket, so it's replacing my down jacket for now, just because I want to test it out. My other jacket that I've been using is the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer, which is an awesome jacket. This one's a little bit heavier, but I like the option of having a synthetic version as well because when this thing gets wet it's still going to perform so this would go in next this is just a big stuff sack that came with a sleeping bag that was sent that's also going to be tested out this fall but this is the stuff sack for it but i'm going to use it for a clothing bag um, i've been using those cheap dry bags that you get from walmart for years and i'm tired of them so this is a lot more room much lighter weight it's a Dyneema fabric. It just Velcros, rolls, and then clips together. It kind of acts like a dry bag. So if things were to get wet inside my backpack, which is pretty unlikely because my backpack is made out of Dyneema as well, which is a waterproof, lightweight material, I'm not gonna have to worry. So it's kind of double protection. So um, I will keep my clothes in here. What I normally keep in here is really just like one extra pair of underwear, but I like to bring three extra pairs of socks. Uh, one pair is because I like to sleep with a, you know, a clean pair of socks. And then the other two pairs are me swapping them out throughout the day. If they get nasty, if they get dirty, if they get wet, I like to have dry socks. My feet are important to me and making sure that my feet stay uh, comfortable and not having any issues is really important. So that's what's going to go inside of my clothing bag and my clothes would go in next. All right, another new gear purchase for me. Well, it's not really a purchase. This was actually sent to me by Light AF. Um, Chris must have been listening in some of my older videos where I talked about never having to uh, hang a bear bag before. Everywhere I go, it's like either a storage locker or um, they've got the you know lines to already hang stuff or um, I you know bear cans are required, that kind of thing. And here in Wisconsin, there's really no bear, so it's not something that I've ever needed before. So he sent me this. So that means I gotta find a place where the bear are. <laughs> and I'm gonna be hiking there hopefully soon. And I'm definitely gonna try this out, which means I'm gonna have to learn how to do the PCT hang. Uh, the whole kit comes with it. Comes with this really cool little Dyneema stuff sack. Inside here is just some bear line. Um, it comes with a toggle as well, and then a small carabiner. A really cool way to you know hang your food and to keep it fresh. This particular one has a button instead of Velcro. You just roll it up, same idea as the ZPEX one. Snap it together. I think this one is a little bit thicker Dyneema, so this one's gonna be a little bit more durable than the ZPEX one, but either way, it works. My cook kit is what's gonna go in next. Um, this is my Evernew Titanium Pasta Pot. I like this pot, it's got the strainer holes on there. It's got a lid that pops on and off, and it kind of snaps on so it doesn't fall out when you're straining. It's got these cool, uh, silicone handles. It's got the markings here for measurements, and then it's got a spout here so it's easy to pour. It's a one liter titanium pot. 
um, but it's super lightweight. I mean, I think it weighs just over four ounces with the pot and the lid. So I really like this thing, but this is what's gonna go in next. So when I pull out my food bag, I can grab my cook kit and start cooking. All right, so the next thing that's gonna go in is my Diddy bag. This is a hip belt pouch from z -Packs. It's also made out of Dyneema, so it's waterproof essentially. I really like it because it fits everything I need. It's lightweight. I had an extra one laying around, so I use it as a Diddy bag. I'll show you exactly what I've got inside of it. I've got the Sea to Summit head net. I keep some cables in here for my electronic. I've got a little micro USB, and then I've also got an Apple iPhone cable here. I charge everything with this 10,000 milliamp hour RAV power uh, battery bank. Extremely lightweight. I think this actually is less weight possibly than the super popular Anchor 10,000 milliamp hour uh, one that is just shaped a little bit different. Um, I also own that one, but I like this one because it's narrow and it fits easily inside of here, almost like a cell phone. And then I also keep Esbit cubes. I wrap them up inside of aluminum foil because the aluminum foil keeps the stench out. The stench is terrible. These things smell like fish. So make sure you wrap them up if you're gonna do something like that. All right, so my go-to headlamp is gonna be the Black Diamond Revolt. I really like this headlamp because it's rechargeable. It also can take AAA uh, batteries. It has the red light on here. It's got a super high lumen output, like 300 lumens. Um, it's IPX8 waterproof, and the batteries last forever. I know I'm not gonna need to recharge this thing, but if I needed to, I could. I mean, it's got a USB uh, port right here, so I can charge it if I need to, but it's the Black Diamond Revolt. Um, I also keep my pad straps in here if I'm using a quilt, because you wanna make sure that that quilt stays attached to the pad on the sides, because otherwise, you know, cold air can get under there, can the draft can get in there, so you wanna make sure that you have uh, pad straps. And then I also take with me a little Tenacious Tape. Um, this is just a small roll. Um, I use this for repairing my tent if I need to. I could repair a rip in my backpack if I need to. I can repair a rip in my quilt if I need to. So Tenacious Tape is always something good to have around. I take this really cool z -Packs toothbrush with me, ultra light. It's got my toothpaste in there as well. I take some chapstick with me. This also works as chafing cream because if you could take this chapstick, you can wipe it on like a, a buff or something and then put it places where you need to get rid of the chafe. So chapstick works for that. I also carry with me a mini Bic lighter. I like the bright ones because I can see them if they land on the ground. Uh, but a mini Bic lighter always comes with me in case I want to start a fire. And then I also take with me this tiny little Swiss Army Classic SD. It's got some scissors, it's got a knife, it's got a nail file, um, it's got a toothpick, it's got a tweezers on here. Um, so pretty cool little knife, um, weighs next to nothing. I think it's actually less than an ounce. All right, so that's everything inside of my Diddy bag. So then all this stuff goes in here. And then this is gonna go right on top because I'm probably gonna need a lot of this stuff throughout the day. And then last but not least, I'm gonna put in my tent if I am tenting. And we'll just assume that I'm gonna take a tent this time around. So this backpack just rolls right up. Just like the dry bags do. Snaps together on the front, and then this strap connects here, and you can cinch it down nice and tight. But uh, that pretty much does it for everything that's gonna go on the inside of the pack. On the back part of the backpack, this particular one I have a mesh pouch, and um, honestly, I'm never gonna use a backpack unless it has some type of a back pouch on it, because this is a great place to keep all that stuff that I um, absolutely need throughout the day, maybe in an emergency, or you know, stuff I just don't care if it's wet and I need it to dry out. So um, I'm gonna put my footprint for either my tent or my hammock in here, and this is just a piece of Tyvek. I'm gonna put my medical kit, and I made a whole video on this medical kit if you're interested in what's in here. I will link that right up here for you guys so you can check that out. Really, the only thing that's changed is I keep Picardin lotion in here instead which uh, I've switched to because that stuff is awesome. So you wanna check that out. But that's gonna go in here as well. And then this is my poop kit. I just keep uh, just a small amount of toilet paper in here. I keep some wet wipes, and this is just a small amount of wet wipes. Uh, maybe I pulled a lot of these out, so there's probably maybe six or seven wet wipes in here. And then just a bottle of hand sanitizer. That's gonna go inside of a Ziploc bag. And that's gonna go in the back because you know I'm gonna need that throughout the day. Another item that I'm gonna access throughout the day likely is gonna be my rain jacket. This is the Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain jacket. I can use this as a hard shell. 
I can use this as like a windbreaker. It's breathable. It's great. It's never gotten me wet at all. Um, I really like this jacket. It's pretty expensive. You're going to pay at least $100 for this, um, but it's super lightweight. It weighs like a little over six ounces. So it's a great, great rain jacket. So that's going to go back here as well. And then I'm also going to keep my uh, water filtration set up here. And that's going to go into the back part as well. So this is the Knock Vecto. This is a pretty popular dirty water bag. And um, if you don't know what a dirty water bag is, what it is is it's just a bag in a way to collect water out of the streams and out of the rivers and out of the lakes. This one I like a lot because it opens up nice and big. So all I have to do is scoop the water out and it fills up right away. I don't have to hold a bottle under the water and wait for that thing to fill up. Um, I can just do it really, really quickly. This folds over and then you just slide this back on top. Now it's totally water sealed on the top. Um, and then, you know, the cap obviously is here. And then I use a Sawyer squeeze as my water filter. Don't buy the micro, it's junk. Don't buy the mini, it doesn't uh, work quickly. The flow rate is terrible on it. Um, but you can just get a gravity system like this if you like. It's got this tubing here that you can get off of pretty much any uh, hydration bladder that you've probably got laying around. Um, this one happened to come with this kit. And then this just screws right onto the dirty water bag hangs on a tree or whatever I want it to hang on, and then a bottle will attach down here to this coupler that comes with it. The bottle will screw in here, and then it uh, filters the clean water right into the bottle. It's a pretty cool way to make sure your water stays nice and clean. And then I'll just wrap all this stuff up, and it'll go inside of this mesh pouch that came with it. Keeps it nice and organized. And then on the inside, I also keep just some extra caps. I got a sport bottle cap here. Um, I tend to lose caps and if other people lose caps, I've got them. So they're really lightweight. It's not that big of a deal. Wrap it up and then I can stick it right in here and I can access clean water throughout the day. On the bottom of my pack, I'm gonna attach my Helinox Chair Zero. This is gonna go on these bottom straps here. It's a 17 ounce chair with the stuff sack. I love having a chair. I don't like to sit on Z seats. I don't want to sit on a stool. I don't want to sit on a rock or the wet ground. Um, I don't want to sit on some foam pad. I would much rather sit on a chair and I have absolutely no issue carrying a chair to camp. So uh, this is definitely coming with me on every single trip. On the outside of the pack, I'm also going to keep my Garmin InReach Mini. This has become a vital piece of gear because this helps me communicate with my family. It also keeps track of my progress, and it's got this SOS button here that will contact emergency services if something happens to go south. Um, you gotta keep this thing on the outside of your backpack because it's gotta have a direct line of sight to the sky. Um, it doesn't work if you're in a dense forest. So if you get a direct line of sight to the sky, it will have signal, um, it'll be able to you know, send your text messages or receive text messages from satellite. Um, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, a text message can take five, 10, 15 minutes to send and receive but um, it's a fantastic, awesome piece of gear. It's gonna come with me on every trip. I like orange, because if I lose it, or if I'm in a serious situation, I can see it right away, and I can just reach for it and hit that SOS button. Then I've got my tent poles here. Inside here, I also have my stakes that come with the tent. They're really lightweight stakes, so I don't mind them a bit. Those are gonna go in either side in a water bottle pocket here, and then I'm gonna put two one liter water bottles on both sides of the pack. So I have at least two liters of water storage and I have another two liters in that dirty water bag. And then only because I like to have easy access to water while I'm hiking, I don't wanna to have to take off my backpack. I can't hardly reach back and get bottles out. So I like an extra bottle just to be able to fill up and have it ready to go. And on the bottle, I have that Aqua Clip. You can get these at zpacks.com. These are really inexpensive. It clips onto the bottle like this. You leave it on the bottle, and then it just attaches to your sternum strap. Here, I'll show you. So if you got your sternum strap here, all this does sets on there like that, and it hangs there while you're hiking. It doesn't really bounce around at all. It stays put, and if I need something to drink, I get a drink, it goes right back on. Really, really easy to use. All right, so that is my entire loadout that I will normally be taking for a fall hike. And this is really gonna work for any number of days hiking, whether you're going for a weekend or you're going for five days or 10 days even. All that's really gonna change if you're doing that is you may have to carry a ton more food and you know make sure you got your water. 
uh, you know, rationed correctly. But other than that, I mean, it's really gonna come with me on pretty much any hike. Oh, and then one final thing, I always bring a GPS with me, which is gonna be my cell phone. I also bring my watch, which is a compass. It's a Casio G-Shock GWN1000. And um, I also bring a paper map of the area that I'm going to. So I've got three forms of navigation. I wanna stay as safe as I can on the trail and uh, make sure that I get home safely to my family. So make sure you check out the other videos in this collaboration, the other YouTubers. We've got Jeremiah Stringer, JK is hiking, and Tuba Solo the Hiker. Awesome guys, they're gonna have different setups, every one of them. Every one of them has been hiking for a while. They know what they're doing, quality guys. I watch their channels all the time and you should too. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe for more. Make sure you hit the bell notification so I can send you a video every time it's released. And I'll see you on the next one.